All right, then, my friends. So at the minute, we have our build type and we associated all these methods with the build type as well. And we're hard coding the values we pass into these methods. Now, this is great. It's all working. But I would like the user to be able to choose, for example, the name of the bill when we create a new bill or maybe add items themselves and choose what items they are going to be instead of us hard coding this into the program. So when I say I want the user to choose, I want to work with the terminal so that we might ask a question to the user when we run this program in the terminal, what do you want to call your bill? And the user answers that they type something in to call the bill something. And then they have options to add items like press A to add a new item and type that in. That kind of thing. All that requires getting user input inside the terminal. So that's what we're going to focus on. So what I'm going to do to begin with is get rid of all of this stuff inside the main function. And then I'm going to create another function called create bill. And this function is going to be responsible for creating a new bill and getting that name of the bill from the user. So getting the user input. And we're going to call that function from down here. Now it's going to return a bill object. So we have to type the return right here. And inside main, I can now call this. I could say my bill is colon equal to create bill like so. So we're going to call this function. It's going to run this and eventually it's going to get information from the user and it's going to return at the end a bill object for us, which we're storing inside this variable. Now, the way we get user input information is by using what's known as a reader to read the information that a user types in. So we're going to create that reader up here. I'm going to say reader is colon equal to buff IO, which is a package we're going to import. So we can see up here now we've imported buff IO. And then on this, we're going to use a method called new reader to read some information. Now, we have to specify where we want to read from. What is the source of this information? And that's going to be the standard input. That's what this is called when we use the terminal, the standard input. And we get that from another package called OS. So I can type OS.standard in like this. And that is going to specify the source. And also it imported this OS package for us, which is this. So we have this reader now and it's saying I want to create a reader which is going to read from the standard input, meaning the terminal. So now we need to do something with this reader. So first of all, what I want to do is inside the console, ask the user some kind of question or tell them to do something. So I'll say FMT dot print and I'll say inside here, create a new bill name colon and then a space. So that's what we're going to ask the user. But then we want the user on the same line to answer this. So that's where we say name. And then also we get an error from this. Now we're not going to use the error. So I'm going to do underscore because this method we're about to use is going to return to us multiple values. But we set that colon equal to the reader we just created and then a method called read string. And we want to read it after they've pressed a specific character. Now this is going to be in single quotes. It's not a string. We're specifying what character we want to read after. And that's going to be a new line. So if you think about it, when a user is typing something into the terminal, at the end of it, they're going to press enter to submit what they type in. And that is the new line. And at that point, that is when the reader is going to read everything they've entered up until they press that new line key. All right. And what they entered is going to be captured right here as a string inside this name variable. OK, then. So let me now also trim any white space from this name because they might add a load of spaces in their answer. I want to take that away. So I'm going to say name is going to be updated to strings, which is the strings package dot. And then we're going to use a method called trim space to get rid of any white space. And then we pass in the name. So the actual name we get back, the string we get back from the reader, we're passing that into this function to trim any white space from it and then store it in name again. All right. So if I save this, then we should automatically import strings. Is it working? No. OK, so let's manually do this strings like so. OK, then. So now I want to do something with this name right here that we have. Well, 
all I want to do is create a new bill. And remember, we have the new bill function right here to do that. So I can pass this variable into that function. So all I'm going to do is say B is colon equal to a new bill where we pass in the name like so. And then after that, I'm going to say FMT dot print line just to say we've created this bill and I'll say created the bill and then dash and then I'll output the name of the bill. So B dot name. So remember, we pass the name into this function and that assigns it to the name property on the bill. So that's what we're outputting right here, which is going to be what they pass in. OK, so eventually we just have to return the bill like so. Now, we're not doing anything with this bill down here. So let us just print it to the console. So we're doing something with it. FMT dot print line my bill. All right, so let's try this out and hopefully this is going to work. So I want to run the files. And it's saying create a bill name and it's waiting there for me to enter something in because the next line right here is saying, look, I want you to read what they're putting into the console now. So I could say something like Luigi's bill like so and press enter and it says created the bill Luigi's bill. And we also see this object at the end, this bill object, which is what we print out right here. So that's how we take input from a user. We create a reader using this buff IO package, this new reader method and a source, which is os.standardin, which is the terminal. Then down here, we can use the read string method on the reader to say, look, I want to read from this source right here up until they press enter, essentially. And once they press enter, return to me inside this variable what they typed, the name. And then I'm trimming the space and then we're generating this new bill right here and logging some things to the console. So this is nice. But in our application, we're going to be reading information from the user several times. So what I want to do is create some kind of helper function called get input, which I can call instead of writing all of this stuff out over and over again. Instead of all this, I could just call one simple function, which houses this kind of logic to get some user information. So let's create that function up here. I'm going to say func get input like so. And this is going to return two things. It's going to return the string that we get back from this method right here. In this case, it's the name, but in the future, it could be other things like a new item, but also the error. So let's say we're going to return two items in parentheses. The first is going to be of type string, what they type in, and the second is going to be of type error. Now, I don't want to have to create a new reader every time we call this function. So what I'm going to do is accept as an argument a reader, and we'll call that R inside the function. Now, if we just hover over this, you'll notice it's a pointer to buffio.reader. So that's the type. So we can say right here, it's going to be pointer buffio.reader. So we're going to accept in a reader when we call this function. And also, we're going to accept some kind of string. And that's going to be the question that we ask a user, because every time we call this, it might be a different question. It could be to add a new item, etc. So we'll call this prompt and make it type string. So we're accepting in these two arguments now. Now the first thing I want to do inside here is print out this prompt. So I'll say fnt dot print, not print line because we want it to stay on the same line when they enter in their information. So just print and we're going to print out the prompt like so. All right, so the next thing I want to do is get the information. So it's basically this line right here. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in right here. But instead of name, it's going to be input. More generic because it's not always going to be the name we're grabbing, just the input that the user types in. And also, we'll grab the error as well, which we'll call error. All right, so this is not reader. It's just R because we called it R right here. This is the reader we're passing in. And then all we need to do is return two values, the string and the error. So the first one is going to be strings dot trim space and then pass in the input like so much like we trimmed it down here we're returning a string which is trimmed of any white space 
and then the second thing we're going to return is the error. So now we have this helper function and it's going to be easier in the future to call this function anytime we want to get some user input. So I'm just going to refactor this down here. I'm going to comment this out. We still create the reader because we're going to pass that in to the function. But then down here, all I need to do is say, OK, well, I want the name and I don't want the error, which we also return. But I want the string and I want to call that name. And I'm going to set that colon equal to get input. And then we pass in the prompt, which is going to be create a new bill name like so. And then the second argument is the reader, which we created right here. So this is much easier in the future to type out than all of this, right? Three lines, one line. So that's much better. It makes it much more reusable. And now if I save this, everything should work the same way. So create a new bill name. I'm going to call this Mario's bill and press enter. And we can see create the new bill and we have this bill object. So that there, my friends, is how we get input from a user. Now, there's one more thing I want to do in this video, and that is just to give the user an extra prompt to add items or maybe add a tip or later on we're going to be able to save the bill as well so an option for that so first of all let me get rid of these comments we don't need these anymore and then i'm going to create another function and this function is going to be called prompt options so inside here we'll take a bill as an argument which we'll refer to as b we're not going to return anything but what we are going to do is get some user input again because we're going to offer the user three options we're going to say press a to add an item press s to save the bill or press t to add a tip or update the tip so we're going to create a reader again we can't use this reader because that's in its own function so we're going to create another local reader for this function we set that equal to buff io dot new reader and then inside here the source which is os dot standard in okay so we have this reader now all we need to do is call this function again so what i'm going to do is copy this and paste it down here now this time it's not going to be the name that we're getting back i don't want to call it that it's going to be whatever option they choose so i'll call it opt all right so the message I want to give to the user is instead choose option and then inside parentheses I'll say what they can type so a is going to be add an item s is going to be save the bill and then t is going to be add tip okay so we're giving them these different options so let's do a colon at the end of that as well what we're going to do is get back hopefully one of three letters a s and t so let's give this a whirl and in fact what we'll do is print out whatever they choose so i'm going to say fnt dot print line opt and what we're going to do is fire this function after they've created the bill down here so all i need to do is say prompt options and we're going to pass in my bill because remember we expect to take in a bill and we're going to use that later on in here because that's the bill we're going to be editing when they add an item or save it or add a tip so let me save this and run this so go run main.go and bill.go and the bill name i'm just going to call it test and then we get this option now so i could say for example s to save it and i see s right here and we can see the map as well at the end of everything because we print it out remember in fact what i'm going to do is get rid of that print statement because i don't want to keep printing that out okay so let's try this again and notice this if i type something else as an option for example f then it just types out f now in the future i don't want this to be allowed i only want the user to type a s or t so don't worry about this for now we'll combat that probably over the next couple of lessons and we're going to start in the next lesson by learning about the switch statement to look at this option variable right here to look at the letter and to fire code dependent on what letter that they select all right so we'll take a look at that next